Me, I want what's coming to me. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tom? The world should come. This is not a subtle portrayal of a man you know, who rises to power. I mean, this movie comes on, it's bigger than life, it's hyper-realistic. Fuck the fucking Diaz brothers! Fuck them all! It's violent, it's sexy, it's right there in your face. Tony Montana is probably the only drug superhero <laughs> ever in a movie. Don't be calling me no fucking dishwasher. I'll kick your fucking monkey man, ass man, along you the fucking You're not gonna do that to nobody. nobody. Come on, man. The fact that you're this dishwasher and then all of a sudden you're pushed into this world of drugs and money and then there's this rise to power and you're calling the shots and you're wreaking the violence on people. Dad. That's the way it works. First you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the woman. In a drug dealer's mind, what mortal life is there? You end up being falling prey to your, to your product. You get comfortable, you get complacent, you lose control, you end up dead. The world is yours, but at what expense? If you look at the situation in the 80s in Miami, some of the things that were happening politically and culturally uh, just sort of lent themselves to the proliferation of drug trafficking. It was the beginning of the cocaine cowboy era. Cocaine was, uh, was coming into the uh, U.S. in record, in record quantities. So there was a strong demand for cocaine. It was just such a crazy environment. The restaurants were booming. The discotheques were just loaded. Whether it was the people that were there partying to use the drug, the people that sold it in the club. If you took the drug money out of Miami, the whole state would sink. And then you're gonna find out your biggest problem is not bringing in the stuff. But what to do with all the fucking cash? <laughs> Tony Montana came from Cuba in the famous boat lift and found himself in a country with which he wasn't familiar, with no gainful employment and really no way to make a name for himself. The criminals that, uh, that came out of the Cuban jails, you know, their opportunities were certainly limited. And then they saw drugs and trafficking drugs as a way to escape and give them power. Somebody says that, you know, you can move this bag of cocaine and I'll pay you, you know, $50,000. And now you got the opportunity to be the powerful guy handling the gun, having the money, the women. The world is yours. I mean, who's gonna wash dishes? Violence is the key to succeeding in the narco trafficking industry. It's a ruthless situation. The things around you that would make the normal individual say, I don't want to get involved in drugs. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to get killed. Tony Montana was willing to take that chance. This is a man who, who shows up a badass. He shows up a hardened criminal. And, and he really does become quite a power throughout the film with just naked, unchecked aggression. So long, man. Have a good friend. Fuck you! The way you rise to power is please the hierarchy by making good deals, making money, not bringing heat to the organization, and being a loyal soldier or you make your own organization and you make that power yourself by being ruthless. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. Anybody who came against them had to go. There was no conversation, there was no debate. They just had to be taken out because they were in the way of his goal. Shoot that piece of shit. No, 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 no! There was a drug kingpin where they killed him, killed his wife, killed his kids, threw them in a swamp in Colombia. It just happened last year. Whether it's a hit on a, an entire family, on someone they believe is an informant, they will take quick and decisive action, and they'll do it in a manner that sends a message to everyone around them to be aware that this is a person, this is an organization that you do not want to cross. Drug dealing at its essence is all about money. Power, ego. The women, the fast cars, the fancy houses. Party, party, party. 
Tony Montana displays his power prominently through the things that he has. A tiered swimming pool, a giant bathtub. Different suits every day, throwing money away. Well, you know you're a Cuban Miami drug dealer if you own wild exotic pets that eat people. He was on some Michael Jackson stuff with that one. Like, excess to the fullest extent. If you go back to the, the Scarface era, they made no effort to hide the fact that this guy's running dope. That highfalutin flash in the cash. You might as well put a sign on your back saying, you know, I'm a drug dealer. You start to feel invincible. You're blinded by the fact that you're making money. You're blinded by the fact that certain people respect you. A drug dealer, you don't live a legitimate lifestyle. Like, you're not supposed to be just out there not caring who sees you. Like, you have no way to prove where you got this money from. can't enter into a business like, like, like drug trafficking on, such, on, a, on a scale like we're talking about without amassing a whole lot of enemies. The most difficult part of keeping your power is staying alive. They're always looking over their, their shoulders for a number of reasons. It is the rival cartels. It is the other people in the drug business. It's who's going to whack me because they all think at some point in time they're going to get killed. You know, and it's law enforcement. You don't know where it's coming from. So you, you always have this tremendous paranoia. And then when you get with the Tony Montana, where you're doing cocaine, it just increases that paranoia to the point where you can't function. That whole combination, it's just, it's just a mixture for an explosion. And I think Tony's paranoia really comes from the fact that he broke the cardinal rule. You don't get high on your own supply. And he was really snorting coke out of control. You're paranoid as it is because of the trade you're in. You get high on drugs, you just be, lose control, as he did. I think if you have any on sign that says the world is yours, in your house, you might be doing a little bit too much cocaine. You may also have too much cocaine if you're able to stick your face into a pile of it and do your cocaine that way. In the South American drug cartels, the utilization of the drug is not permitted. When I dealt with the Cali cartel, if I came in there as this wild guy like Tony Montana with my sport jacket open and, and sniffing cocaine and running around like a wild man and holding guns up, they wouldn't want nothing to do with me. Are there Tony Montanas out there that are wild cowboys and do cocaine? Sure there are, but not at the high, high level. Madamos at the tip of solo. Sin mujer y sin hijo. No, si Sosa dice que lo hagamos ahora, lo hacemos ahora. Vamos. This fucking guy. With him calling off the assassination, it probably did eventually end up killing him because he showed a moment of weakness. One thing for sure when it comes to major drug trafficking organizations, whether it's the consumer that takes the snort or a competitor, if you show weakness, you're dead. Ultimately, at the end of this film, Tony knows his number's up. Gotta get organized here. Huh? He was kind of at the end of Sad, paranoid, friendless, facing a jail sentence. Fuck. Fuck. It clicked in his head at some point that, you know, this is it, but I'm not going out like, you know, a peon. I'm going out in a blaze of glory. Do you want to fuck with me? Okay. He goes down swinging, trying to, trying to keep the world his. And if you want his world, you're going to have to take it in the same way that he took it. For him, that's a hero's death.
cartel leaders that cooperated with me throughout my career. They knew they were going to be rich for a while, take care of their family, live a great life during that time, but that eventually they would either go to jail or be killed. When I think about what I see in drug law enforcement today, it is not uncommon for me to go into a home of a traffic or at any level and see an Al Pacino picture on the wall, to see a Scarface poster. I think the appeal is just coming from nothing to something. In a twisted way, it's the American dream. I work hard for this. There's a lot of reality as to how someone can start as a dishwasher and make it all the way to the top. This guy came from nothing, rose through the power, lived the good life, had everything he wanted to have, and then in the ultimate end, ends up in the base of a pool. You know, the world ain't yours. The moral of the story is don't be a Miami drug dealer. And if you're gonna be a Miami drug dealer, don't have a gun battle in your house. Thank <laughs> you.